Now that you've assembled your iWalk, let's tailor it to fit you. When properly fitted, your iWalk is easy, intuitive, and safe. Small adjustments make a big difference, so please follow along carefully. Wear form-fitting pants that make it easy to determine where the top of your leg is. Avoid baggy pants and, when possible, avoid skirts and shorts. Wear comfortable athletic shoes or go barefoot. Avoid open heel shoes and sandals. In the assembly video, you are instructed on how to configure the foot for left or right leg use. Confirm that the foot is positioned correctly. When worn, the arrow must point towards the outside away from your body. If the foot is positioned incorrectly, the arrow will be pointing inward toward your uninjured leg. Positioned incorrectly, the eye walk will be unstable, which could result in a fall and or an injury. Never use your eye walk with incorrect foot orientation. The gait straps comes in two different versions. One version is fabric. The other is plastic. The gate strap keeps your lower thigh from projecting between the two tubes. Both versions are functionally equivalent. The fabric gate strap comes installed and does not require any adjustment. The plastic gate strap can be adjusted up or down to optimize for different leg shapes and sizes. Position the gate strap approximately three finger widths above the top of the knee platform. You can position it later based on your personal preference. When properly adjusted, your eye walk leg will be the same length as your good leg. You achieve this by adjusting the length of the lower section of the crutch. From a seated position, bend your injured leg 90 degrees. Position the eye walk so that the knee platform comes into full contact with your shin. Pull up on the handle to make sure you have full contact. Then, extend your good leg so that it's next to the eye walk. Lengthen or shorten the lower crutch section until the bottom of the foot is level with the bottom of your heel. This will get you reasonably close to the correct height. To make the height adjustment, loosen the clamp nut and bolt. Then remove the C-clip. To lengthen, pull out on the foot. To shorten, push in on the foot. Align the holes in the inner and outer tubes, then reinsert and lock the C-clip. Finish by tightening the clamp nut and bolt. You can make adjustments in half-inch increments. Here's how. The outer tube has holes spaced at one-inch intervals. The inner tube has two series of holes. These holes are staggered to allow adjustments in half-inch increments. When you're making your adjustment, note the position of the holes as they line up. Test your setting by kneeling on the crutch. With your weight, Distributed evenly on both legs, your hips and shoulders should be level. If not, readjust the lower height adjustment. In the assembly video, you adjusted the thigh supports to be in the number 6 position. If they are not in the number 6 position, adjust them now by lifting up and rotating the thigh support. Now we will adjust the upper crutch height. Start by removing the two height adjustment clips. Once again, position the crutch so that the knee platform is in full contact with your shin. Pull up on the handle to extend the height adjustment until the inner thigh support contacts your groin. The higher you go, the more stable the eye walk will be. Now push down lightly on the handle until the holes in the tubes align. Install the height adjustment clip on the outside side of the leg. Repeat for the other side. Now we'll adjust the thigh supports. The thigh support should already be at position number six and the thumb screws are still loose. While kneeling on the crutch, make sure your weight is equal on both legs and that your feet are about hip width apart. Make sure the back of the handle is pressing against your thigh. Adjust the inner thigh support first. Grasp the tube with your fingers and using your thumb, rotate the thigh support inward as far as it will go. It should be in firm contact with your inner thigh. 
Then, rotate the outer thigh support until it comes into contact with your thigh, then a little bit more until it's compressed slightly into your thigh. Remove the crutch and fully tighten the thumb screws. The strapping system on the iWalk is very simple, but it's often used incorrectly, so please follow along carefully. The strap consists of two parts. The black section is used for permanently adjusting the length of the strap. That is its only purpose. Normally, it's a one-time adjustment. The blue section is used only for tightening and loosening the straps. You will tighten the blue section every time you put on your iWalk, and you will loosen the blue section every time you take off your iWalk. In order for the iWalk to work, the straps need to be adjusted very tight. If the straps are too loose, the crutch is wobbly and unstable. Properly tightened, the crutch becomes a part of your leg and is easily controlled and stable. To adjust the straps for the first time, first remove the pads from the straps and set aside. Now fully extend the straps. Lift on the end of the gray buckle and fully extend the blue section of the strap. Then fully extend the black section. Install the black T-lock buckles onto the crutch. The black buckles belong on the inside of your leg, so for your right leg, install them on the left side. For the left leg, install them on the right side. Now we're going to permanently adjust the straps to the proper length for your leg. Make sure you don't have any twists in the straps. Adjust the strap length using the black permanent adjustment section until the strap is snug against your leg. Now, fully tighten the strap by pulling the blue section. The gray buckle and the blue buckle should be almost touching. The strap should be really tight at this point. Test the strap tension by trying to remove the blue buckle. It should be impossible to remove. If you can remove the buckle, then the permanent length adjustment on the black side of your strap is too long. You need to shorten it. Here's how. Reinstall the blue buckle, then fully loosen the blue section of the strap. Next, shorten the permanent length adjustment section by pulling on the end of the black strap. Test the strap length by pulling the blue section tight again. Test your setting by trying to remove the blue buckle. Repeat this process until you cannot remove the blue buckle. If the strap has the proper tension, but the blue and gray buckle are not touching, then the permanent adjustment black section is too short. You need to lengthen it. Here's how. Slightly lengthen the black section by lifting on the gray buckle, then retighten the blue side. Check again for proper tension. Now remove all three straps by loosening the blue side only and removing the blue buckle. Then remove the crutch. Replace the pads. Note that the longer pad goes in the position behind your knee. Wrap it as tight as possible. Note that the two Velcro strips attach to the fabric, not to each other. Test the straps one last time. The iWalk can be used with most casts or boots. Some may require some simple modifications. If you're using an air boot, make sure that the pump is located on the side of the boot. If located on the front of the boot, it will pump with each step on the iWalk. If you know you'll be casted, ask your casting technician to build the cast with a smooth transition at the top of the cast and to stiffen the front of the cast. If there's a large step between the end of the cast or boot and your leg, then the area above the cast or boot is unsupported when you kneel on the crutch. This can result in a painful hot spot directly under the top of the cast or boot. Fortunately, this is easy to fix. Simply add additional padding to take up the space directly above the end of the cast or boot. A folded towel works great, or you can add additional padding from any source. If using a towel, make it thicker than you think it should be. It will compress when you put weight on it. If you're having any difficulties in fitting your iWalk, you can contact our tech support for assistance. Now that you have successfully fitted your iWalk, it's time to learn how to walk with it which we will cover in our next video.